HRC and the the principal coordinator Nicole Thier and uh, Judith Mishra Ibarak uh, <coughs> for arranging this beautiful function. Uh, uh, I have been associated with this uh, since 2015 uh, when they invited me for the Norwich conference and the literature and translation. Uh, and I'm really surprised that uh, uh, there is an organization like this based in Nottingham and Montpelier uh, doing such a good work for the those who are uh, marginalized called Dalits, Adivasis in India, which is the biggest democracy in the world. <coughs> uh, I just want to explain to you briefly what is Dalit? Because there are plenty of books have come on Dalit, Dalit literature, but it is difficult to understand what is Dalit outside India. And there are many books, uh, you know, even very recently an American writer was brought out comparing Dalits and uh, blacks, but it is not so. The Dalit phenomena is totally, entirely different as explained by only Ambedkar, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar rightly uh, defined it. So, uh, Dalit is an oppressed, marginalized and uh, bereft all kinds of uh, the human uh, requirements. And added to that there is a, an element of untouchability which is more dehumanizing. Uh, you know, the, I just want to say uh, the difference between the racial difference, and, uh, discrimination and this caste discrimination. See, India is a, uh, it's not a racial country, it is mixed race, it has a mixed race. Anthropologically, we are asteroid, called asteroid. We are black, we are brown, we are fire color, everything. So you don't identify on the look of a person. That's where the pain is more excruciating with us. See, as long as one doesn't find my caste, you now when we enter a conversation, he's good with us, very, everything is normal. The moment you get close to one and he tries to understand which caste he belongs to, that's a mentality of people in India. Everyone who comes in contact with somebody, he wants to know what is his caste. So once he is known as a lower caste or a Dalit, and the stubborn starts. So they, they, there is no uh, uh, tolerance. The caste system has intolerance inbuilt in it. That's the reason why people are not living so happily. That's my understanding. So even today, uh, the quarrels take place in the village. You know, villages, uh, almost 70% of India lives in villages. America calls Indian villages is a cesspool of violence and discrimination. So everyone has a job to do, everyone has a place to stand, who has to salute whom, it's all rules of caste system. If it is broken, that man is beaten, even today. We have celebrated recently 75 years of uh, our independence, but even today, the caste discrimination is going on. Every day, 15 Dalit women are raped. In the villages, Dalit women is taken for granted, as if when, when she is at right age, she is meant for rapes by the landlords. So this is still going on. Well, it's a pathetic and the rules are set wonderfully the, in the constitution written by Dr. Ambedkar, but it's on the paper because the rulers are the upper caste and the Brahmins. So they don't want to break those caste rules or they have no will to do it. So that's the problem still going on and now uh, 
apart from the HRC, there are so many others who from outside they are coming and uh, doing some good things, welfare activities are going on. This is my brief introduction uh, of uh, Dalit. And in, from 1970, the literature has started. I think we will have a dialogue. Jacinta is going to ask. Now I will allow her to explain about Adivasi uh, culture in her part. You tell something about the Adivasi background. Okay. And uh, I will continue later. So, Johar, uh, this. The word Johar is derived from the Johar of uh, Mundari, the language of Munda Adivasi of Jharkhand, India. And in Jharkhand it is used for both welcome and thanksgiving. So again, Johar to you all. <coughs> there is about 100 million Adivasi in India and they are the first settlers. But it is ironic that the Indian government believes that there are no Adivasi member of any of the above original peoples of India. But when India became independent on 1st of December 1948 when Jaipal Singh Munda was speaking on behalf of the Adivasi in the constitution drafting committee referred to the aboriginal people of the country as Adivasi. It is unfortunate that word Adivasi was substituted with the word scheduled tribe. In India, tribal areas are divided into fifth scheduled and sixth scheduled area. The sixth scheduled areas are the states of like Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. Whereas the fifth scheduled areas at present are in ten states namely Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh, Jharkhand and I am from Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Odisha, Rajasthan and Telangana. It is ironical that when the Adivasis move from their areas to any other part of country, they lose their identity as an Adivasi. They do not get the privilege which they had as an ST in their own areas. They are not considered Adivasis in the other parts of country. On the other hand, people from all over the country are continuously settling in their areas for their livelihood, to work in the factories, mines and offices that are set up in the name of wider interest of the people and development. Land is acquired and it affects the demographically of these areas. Hence, the Adivasi are continuously resisting to protect their identity and existence. I feel that after independence, tribal areas are in the process of being colonized by the developed cities and states in country. Shall I read a poem? Yes. Uh, <coughs> so, See, uh, as I, I continue from my previous talk, uh, even today uh, in villages the quarrels uh, erupt because somebody is not allowed inside the temple and somebody, they, they can't share the water taps and uh, the, the haircut saloons are not allowed, you know, allowing uh, that is inside. So such things are every, it's day in, day out, cropping up and leading to this. Uh, so in that background, I wrote a poem years back, titled, The Educated Boys of the South Side. Uh, the, these, uh, the, we call it Keri, where the Dalits live. It's always, always in the, to, towards the South Side, because it is considered as inauspicious. The educated boys of the south side, outside holding the aluminium cup, outside holding the aluminium cup, kept apart in the roof thatch, sitting with folded legs, cringing as he asks, Give me a little coffee, boss. Seeing my father like this, I get troubled and heated time and again. 
smearing the whole house with cow dung, scouring and rinsing all the plates and tumblers, lighting the ghee gl lamps made to pay a forfeit for any mistakes, saying, Your feet, my mother, as she runs past the temple, debarred from entering. When I see my mother's plight, my stomach churns and I hawk and spit. It's easy for Brahmins to enter heaven's gate. For outcasts, it's difficult to enter a hotel. Awareness of all this produced ideas. We educated boys grew up and then an incident occurred. The Mahadeshwara coffee club in an upper caste street was invaded. Idlis and dosas were swallowed. There was a fighting in the village. The police intervened, etc. And after all that, why is this outside of the village? An outcast slum? There is no answer. I read in Kannada. Ura Tenkana Tagnaru Nerakeli Nirukisida, Silavar the Battle of Hidu, Horake Pukaragal Putu, was a coffee weary somehow in the Halubi, Bedukti the Apanakando, Bisiagi Nano. Talamana Gondi to Yesto Sala Hattigella Topesarisi, Ida Rivana Tapalegala Tole do Balidu, Tupa the Deepa Urisi, Tapukani Kekati, Ninapada Namova, Hindu Vodo, Isagi, Gudiace, Gadipara Gutida, Nanavada Pada Nodi, Hotte Tolasi, Kakarasi to Halo Sala Brahmanarige Mukti Margave Sulaba, Holimadigarige, Hotel in the Margalu, Durlaba. Is to Pragna Purva Kuagi, Vichara Madua, Tagnaragi, Tundu Hudugarada, now Bedadadu, Nantara Melina Keria, Mahadeshwara Coffee Club, Gelagahaki, Idli Dose Nungidu, Urina Maramari, Polisara Pravesha, Ityadi on the Gatane, Istadaru, Ura Tinkaleake, Holagiri, Inu Bagaharila. I will also read one poem. Nadi Pahar or Baja, but translation should go. Which one? I have read, I have read. No. I have read it. This one, the river and the mountain. I think. Baja. Yes, yes. The river, the mountain, and the bazaar. It was a Sunday, and I, holding little posterity by the hand, set out for the village bazaar. Coming upon a narrow path amidst dry and withered trees, I said to little posterity, Look, it's where village river used to be. A deep furrow in the ground head ahead swallowed all the mountains. I said, suddenly struck by fear, she held me tight. A graveyard, vast and sinister, lay in sight. I said it to her, do you see? It's where the band, barns of your ancestors used to be. Little posterity ran on. We are here at the bazaar. What would you like to buy? The shopkeeper asked. Brother, a little rain, a handful wet earth, a bottle of river and that mountain preserved. There, hanging on that wall, a piece of nature as well. And why is the rain so dear? Pray tell. The shopkeeper said, This wetness is not of here. It comes from another sphere. Times are slack, have ordered just a sack. Fumbling for money in the corner of my sari, I united the knot only to see, in place of a few folded rupees, the crumpled folds of my entire being. Read in. नदी पहाड़ और बाजार गांव में वो दिन था एतवार मैं नन्ही पीढ़ी का हाथ थाम निकल गई बाजार सूखे दरख्तों के बीच देख एक पतली पगडंडी मैंने नन्ही पीढ़ी से कहा देखो यही थी कभी गांव की नदी आगे देख जमीन पर बड़ी सी दरार मैंने कहा इसी में समा गए सारे पहाड़ अचानक वो सहम के लिपट 
समझ गई मुझसे सामने दूर तक फैला था भयावाह कब्रिस्तान मैंने कहा देख रही हो इसे यहीं थे कभी तुम्हारे पूर्वजों के खरीहान नन्ही पीढ़ी दौड़ी हम आ गए बाजार क्या क्या लेना है पूछने लगा दुकानदार भैया थोड़ी बारिश थोड़ी गीली मिट्टी एक बोतल नदी वो डिब्बा बंद पहाड़ और उधर दीवार पर टंगी एक प्रकृति भी दे दो और ये बारिश इतनी महंगी क्यों दुकानदार बोला ये नमी यहाँ की नहीं दूसरे ग्रह से आई है मंदी है छटा भर मंगाई है पैसे निकालने साड़ी की कोर टटोली चौकी देखा आंचल की गांठ में रुपयों की जगह पूरा वजूद मुड़ा पड़ा था सो चिना स्वामी जी आई वॉन्ट टू नो दैट दलित राइटिंग इज देयर फ्रॉम नाइनटीन सेवेंटीज सो वेर दलित लिटरेचर स्टैंड नाउ Yes, of course. Uh, you know, there is a movement in Canada as Dalita Bandaya. There, there is protest literature. Uh, as also as in Adivasi literature, you also protest. It's a protest literature against yeah. the system. Mm-hmm. We also started like that. Uh, it has passed at least four decades now, but the stream is so strong yet. It's not. Uh, coming down as we see but in the beginning uh, the first generation writers were writing uh, they, they were they were very raw in their approach the language was somewhat crude they used kinds of yeah. you know attacking the opponents and like that but now after after every 10 10 years i am observing there is a change in the flow uh, there is refinement in their thinking you know the the, you, the upper caste critics were not accepting our poems in the beginning so they are they are just uh, abusing us they are just making some statements against the system so it, there is no art in it so that's the kind of criticism we were getting but later on uh, they realized that it's it's a new kind of uh, metaphor it's very new kind of images that imagery we brought out was completely different from what they have not given yet so from the marginalized communities really good literature has come out no the lit literature that is the mainstream literature now as i can say yeah yeah and i observe uh, the important languages uh, in the south they we are in, in both in you can observe in cinema and literature the dalits and uh, other backward communities are in the forefront oh now shall i read yeah. a poem yes sir yeah. the title of the poem is service in the new see in uh, south india maybe throughout uh, india this system prevails there is a devadasi paddhati devadasi means the the woman dedicated to the goddesses who is that woman that's important that's from the dalit and backward communities lower caste uh, girls they are wedded to the goddesses at the childhood itself for their so their own superstitions you know they don't have uh, at least uh, wisdom or common sense that why other girls are not coming as goddesses the for the service but the parents insisted that just give one of one of the daughters of as devadasi ultimately you know as you can imagine they end up in uh, red light areas as prostitutes <coughs> this is on one such <coughs> incident service in the nude the usual male priest was praying to the deity right mother the whole time i am inside the sanctum is the priest uh, uh, say the usual male priest was praying to the deity right mother the whole time i am inside the sanctum the life in me is rotting away 
I have no entertainment, he said. Yellamma, this name of the deity, Yellamma appeared to him. Ask your heart's desire, she said. Once a year at your festival, the women folk should go naked in your presence. The whole body should be revealed to us, he replied. Granted, said Yellamma. And holding her sari tight around her, she climbed the hill. In this way, an atrocity was sanctioned by the gods and became service in the nude. Bettale Seve, Kannada Sahaja Purusha Pujari Yobba Devatege Moreto Allamma Yella Kalavu Garbhaguri Yolage Jeevanta Kodayiva Nanage Manaranjani Yilla Yedda Pratekshala Yellamma Ninna Vishtaveno Kediko Andaru Varshakumme Barva Ninna Jatri Yalli Hennu Gadu Ninna Yeduru Bettala Agabeko Namage Sarvanga Darshana Agabeko Yendu Surida Tatastu in the Yellama, than the Woody Biggie to go, Gudda Hatigre. Hige, Atia Charake, Dorakira Deva Mudre, Bethel Saviaitu. Thank you. Would you like to read a poem by yourself? Okay. So there is one poem. क्यों महुआ तोड़े नहीं जाते पेड़ से? So we can hear first translation. Why is the mahua not cut from the tree? Mother, why do you wait all night for the mahua to fall? Why not cut from the tree at once the mahua fall? Mother replies, they grow in the tree's womb all night, and when the time is ripe, fall to the ground on their own as the dewdrops sell them in the morn. We pick them and bring them home. When all night long the tree is writhing with pants of earth, how could we shake a branch, tell me? How could we pluck the mahua, say, from a tree, forcibly? We wait for the mahua to fall, for we love them, is all. क्यों महुए तोड़े नहीं जाते पेड़ से माँ तुम सारी रात क्यों महुए के गिरने का इंतजार करती हो क्यों नहीं पेड़ से ही सारा महुआ तोड़ लेती हो माँ कहती है वे रात भर गद में रहते हैं जन्म का जब हो जाता है समय पूरा खुद बखुद धरती पर आ गिरते हैं भोर ओस में जब वे भीगते हैं धरती पर हम घर ले आते हैं उन्हें उठाकर पेड़ जब गुजर रहा हो सारी रात प्रसव पीड़ा से बताओ कैसे डाल हिला दे जोर से बोलो कैसे तोड़ ले हम जबरन महुआ किसी पेड़ से हम सिर्फ इंतजार करते हैं इसलिए कि उनसे प्यार करते हैं I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Hmm. Since six, 2016 you are writing, but very fast you have come to the top, as I know. Uh, we met in Paris, uh, Julie Thread. <coughs> uh, you, you got your German translation also. Your poems are very popular, I think, yeah. in many places. Uh, Recently, I went to Arunachal Pradesh, one of the tribal areas in India. I lived there for three weeks. Uh, I saw there many, many tribal uh, communities are there. What I observed, or what people's uh, opinion, there are many tribes. The tribals are quarrelsome in nature, and they they avoid uh, coming out of the of this forest and uh, come to the mainstream life or the civilized one. I don't, I am, I am yeah. civilized. In a way I am telling, civilized means not that. So they, they, allow, they, they themselves avoid mm, sending their wards to outside for education. Is it true? 
that they are, are they opening for education? Is it uh, true in, in your part of the uh, jargon? So, yeah, mm. thank you so much. So, how Adivasi or tribal people in India, how they define this uh, civilization word? So, very small poem, two lines. I think I will read that and I will, okay. I will answer you. The wait. They are waiting for us to become civilized. They are waiting for us to become civilized while we are waiting for them to turn human. <laughs> um, so civil, civilization, we um, Adivasi, those who are still um, not that much connected to uh, so-called mainstream, they see from outside like if we will uh, go uh, near to them. So there is lot of uh, problem that and dilemma that whether we will become cunning or how we will save our honesty or purity or nature uh, 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 that connection, you know. So. As Adivasi uh, girl, when I came out, there was lot of struggle because we were as a human being, we living everyone. And then uh, later when we were getting cheated, then we were understanding, no, now we have to be little bit cunning or maybe um, all humans are not same. But in tribal area, everybody believes that all humans are same and everybody is unique and as a human being everybody should be respected and uh, whatever in nature uh, every everything is very unique and important so and every everything has a space so people see that kind of humanity or maybe soul in river also in mountain also in uh, uh, trees also and they worship and then they have believed, we have believed like that, that every, every, not even human beings, but everything has one kind of God's uh, quality. So they worship uh, uh, mountains and they feel like these are our ancestors. So these all beliefs when they come to education and uh, uh, in uh, so-called mainstream, there is lot of dilemma how to balance it. And where we are going so uh, they respect this uh, modern education and then a uh, um, lot of Adivasi wants uh, a good education but they have we have one question that it there is only one perspective to earn money and money but there is not that kind of perspective who respect nature also all humans also whether all you know whether uh, whether whatever caste and gender and uh, um, place uh, uh, they belong so that kind of values which education will save so Adivasi people have this kind of question and they are now looking for different kind of education uh, systems also so with that kind of perspective how we can educate our uh, new generation so people are struggling for that also and searching way very nice answer thank you i'll read my third poem now i would like uh, to ask one question that hmm. uh, huh. after that you can read one Boy. poem in hmm. india dalit literature is weaved separately do you have a space in mainstream uh, literature and what you what you think? I, I have already said it, that uh, we are the mainstream literature now, <laughs> in, at least in Canada. Uh, yes. we are, the, the major names, if you can take, uh, in, who are writing now at present, many Dalit and other backward caste names will come. And earlier it was there, it was, it was, now we are literature, we call it. Uh, modern literature, uh, there at that, that time only the upper caste and uh, the Brahminical literature it was. Now, most and the experience now we are writing is totally 
different and they are valuing it uh, we are in mainstream literature this no, i said no even in cinema and uh, literature we are leading i can say so shall i read a poem oh, this is about drama uh, i'll tell you the happenings every day now in india in in villages or in towns also uh, there is a town called koppal it happened there an incident happened a man took his uh, kid of a two year old kid to the temple Je- it was the birthday of the boy that <laughs> kid that man wanted to pay respects to the god go and get blessings to his son he took him as usually he stood outside he was praying then suddenly rain came so uh, the boy, boy didn't know about it he he, he wanted to have wanted a shade you know he ran away into the temple this man standing there he was praying and somebody suddenly looked at that boy who he just went inside the temple so he was brought literally out and uh, the next course you know he called people who oh, an untouchable boy went into the temple it is a matter of these these our hindus they are obsessed with purity and pollution anything we will do has these two aspects so the lower whatever lower caste they do it is not good and it's polluted so they called the panchayat and everything they made a uh, thing they had to pay some 25000 for cleaning the temple <laughs> and he was ostracized for some time that that kind of strict actions are taken for violating the caste rules in villages even today this happened just a few months back not long ago so this this i wrote years back there's another story i just read it the cow of reason is tied to a post a boy was playing a ball rolled rolled roll, rolling into the temple courtyard the boy ran picked it up and held it to his chest people who knew he was from the untouchable colony sprinkled cow dung in the yard and kept quiet the plate of conscience was rusty as a housewarming ritual a cow was pushed inside you, you know so many rituals in indian houses when people heard it belonged to a cobbler the cow was belonged to a cobbler there was yelling and shouting another cow was brought and sent in with sighs of relief the cow of reason was tied to a post outside when the earthquake sank their land patels marwadis achuts all fell into the same hole those who came out had lost everything and even then the camp kitchens for the untouchables were separate pampa is the senior most poet in kannada adi kavi who said human kind is one caste bowed to his head in this land of kurukshetra some fifth varna people picked up a dead ox and removed the skin of for tan- tanning some others called it cow slaughter plucked out of their eyes and disemboweled them their orphaned children sobbed and wept but no one's mind was smeared with the blood of defilement here green weeds the bilwa flower of the cow and the cow all get defiled goddesses also menstruate but that desai's bull buffalo does not mount the untouchable buffalo cow let rain and fire pour down volcanoes erupt oh gods let there be division even in the graveyards and he if he, hell exist there too viveka vemba akadannu kutakke katti ondu mugu aadutta aitu chendu urulutta urulutta devasthanada angala kidiyitu sahaja odi chendanne edegottikonda mugu 
ಹೊರಗೇರಿಯದೆಂದು ತಿಳಿದು ಅಂಗಳಕ್ಕೆ ಗಂಗಜಲ ಎರಚಿದರು ಸುಮನಾದರು ಅಂಧಕರ್ಣವೆಂಬ ಗಂಗಾಳ ತುಕ್ಕು ಹಿಡಿದಿತ್ತು ಗೃಹ ಪ್ರವೇಶ ಮಾಡುತ್ತಾ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರವೆಂದು ಆಕಳೊಂದನ್ನು ಒಳಗೆ ನುಗ್ಗಿಸಿದರು ಅದು ಚಮ್ಮಾರನದೆಂದು ತಿಳಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಹರಿಹಾಯ್ದರು ಅರಚಾಡಿದರು ಬೇರೊಂದು ಆಕಳು ಹಿಡಿದು ಮತ್ತೊಮ್ಮೆ ಒಳಗೆ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ನಿಟ್ಟು ಸಿರುಬಿಟ್ಟರು ವಿವೇಕಂ ವಿವೇಕವೆಂಬ ಆಕಳನ್ನು ಹೊರಗೆ ಗೂಟಕ್ಕೆ ಕಟ್ಟಿದ್ದರು ಭೂಕಂಪನವಾಗಿ ಈ ನೆಲ ಕುಸಿಯಿತು ಪಟೇಲನು ಮಾರವಾಡಿಯು ಅಚೂತನು ಒಂದೇ ಧರಿಗೆ ಬಿದ್ದರು ಎದ್ದು ಬಂದವರು ಎಲ್ಲವನ್ನೂ ಕಳೆದುಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದರು ಬೆಂಜಿ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪು ಮಾತ್ರ ಅಚೂತರಿಗೆ ಬೇರೆಯಾಗಿದ್ದಿತು ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಜಾತಿ ತಾನೊಂದೇ ಒಲಂ ಎಂದ ಪಂಪ ತಲೆ ತಗ್ಗಿಸಿದ ಈ ಕುರುಕ್ಷೇತ್ರದ ನಾಡಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಪಂಚಮರು ಸತ್ತ ಧನವನ್ನು ಎತ್ತಿ ಹದ ಮಾಡಲೆಂದು ತೊಗಲು ಬಿಡಿಸುತ್ತಿದ್ದರು ಗೋಹತ್ಯೆಯಿಂದವರು ಕೆಲವರು ಅವರ ಕಣ್ಣು ಕಿತ್ತರು ಕರುಳ ಬಗೆದರು ತಬ್ಬಲಿಗಳಾದ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಬಿಕ್ಕಿ ಬಿಕ್ಕಿ ಹತ್ತರು ಯಾರ ಚಿತ್ತಕ್ಕೂ ಮೆತ್ತಿಕೊಳ್ಳಲಿಲ್ಲ ಮೈಲಿಗೆ ನೆತ್ತರು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಗರುಕೆ ಬಿಲ್ವ ಪತ್ರೆ ಗೋವು ಎಲ್ಲ ಮೈಲಿಗೆಯಾಗುತ್ತವೆ ದೇವತೆಗಳೂ ಮುಟ್ಟಾಗುತ್ತಾರೆ ಹೊಲೆಯನೆ ಎಮ್ಮೆಗೆ ದೇಸಾಯಿಯ ಕೋಣ ಹಾಯುವುದಿಲ್ಲ ಸುರಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಬೆಂಕಿ ಮಳೆ ಸಿರಿದೇಳಲಿ ಜ್ವಾಲಾಮುಖಿ ದೇವರೇ ಸ್ಮಶಾನಗಳು ಮಾತ್ರ ಬೇರೆಯಾಗಿರಲಿ ನರಕವಿದ್ದರೆ ಅದು ಸಹ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಒನ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ದಟ್ ದಲಿತ ಅಂಡ್ ಆದಿವಾಸಿ ಬೋತ್ ಆರ್ ಸೆಪರೇಟ್ ಸೆಪರೇಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಬಟ್ ಆಸ್ ದಲಿತ್ ಸೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ನಾವು ವಿ ಆರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಮೆನಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅನದರ್ ಸೈಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಆದಿವಾಸಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರಗಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೆಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ವೇರ್ ದಲಿತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆದಿವಾಸಿ ಲಿವ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಇನ್ ರೆಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ಬಟ್ in city and in intellectual and people those who are educated they never come together even dalit uh, uh, those who are in mainstream they feel like still adivasis are you know much lower than us so same kind of tendency and behavior comes what from which both we are struggling or fighting so i just want to know why why mm. there is like that uh as my as of my understanding is concerned uh adivasis uh feel more still belong to the forest and they want natural life to be lived and uh, not that they don't want to get educated that yeah. they they are now coming up no i have seen as i said yeah. in arunachal pradesh there are many doctors engineers yes. we work. want means we want education yeah. and we are coming out mm-hmm. but still we don't want to lose our roots also yes that's what uh, you know we both dalits and marginalized uh, the adivasis are marginalized we don't have basically the the land we are not land owners the upper caste or somebody else will be monitoring us we are only labor class you see whatever they get fever in the list it was happening now it's now people are opening their eyes after see after the ambedkar post ambedkar lot of things have changed but still they are resisting it because the power is with them money is with them these two things in the caste system the the basically it revolves around the power and the money and the women yes they want to control these three things are the essence of caste system so the adivasi is part of it now you know they want to avoid because we are more in number combined with adivasis and dalits you know in some states you are more than 60% mm-hmm. dalits are in some states they are more than 25% so they don't want we people to come together and think alike yeah this is the politics of it thank you yeah. so i will read one poem okay hamara hisa kon dega saab so english translation will who will answer to us sir how deeply you get hurt that when destroyed is a temple mosque or church you keep for centuries alive the flame of revenge and grudge but to those to whom forests are a sacred space who will answer for their destruction so for ages you've been at this business of religion 
But those outside your purview, they know their forests, worship them. It's where they live and where they die. How dare you barge into their sacred spaces with your boots? Those countless lives of innocence that you have taken in the name of progress, sir, who will answer for them? Those living in the hills and forests, they're not rustic castaways, but they are Adivasis, the first dwellers. Why on their own native land you turn them into untouchable castaways? Why with your sundry beliefs and faiths you keep coming this way? And if you must come, why bulldoze their culture and religion with your own? You have been in cahoots in every age, with those who destroy their sacred space. Pray tell, sir, who indeed will answer for all this loot and plunder? What kind of religion is yours? At each other's throats you are forever. And nature who feeds and nurtures you, even her you would not spare. We will fight to the end of days against this very culture of yours. But just let us know, this earth that has been destroyed, who will answer for that, sir? Hamara Hisab, Kwan Devasab. Mandir Masjid Girjaghar Tootne Par, Tumhara Dard, कितना गहरा होता है कि सदियों तक लेते रहते हो उसका हिसाब पर जंगल जिनका पवित्र स्थल है उनको उजाड़ने का हिसाब कौन देगा साहब जाने कब से धर्म धर्म खेल रहे जो तुम्हारे धर्म के दायरे में आते नहीं वे जंगल को पूछते हैं जंगल को जानते हैं वहीं जीते हैं वहीं मर जाते हैं तुम सब बूट पहन कर उनके पवित्र स्थलों में कैसे घुस आते हो विकास कह कहकर जितने निर्दोष मारे हैं उन सब का हिसाब कौन देगा साहब वे जो जंगल पहाड़ में रहते हैं वे वनवासी नहीं आदिवासी हैं उनको उनकी ही जमीन पर क्यों अछूत बनाकर रखते हो अपना अपना धर्म लेकर इधर क्यों चले आते हो आते हो तो धर्म के साथ उनकी संस्कृति पर बुलडोजर क्यों चलाते हो हर काल में तुम सब शामिल हो उनके पवित्र स्थलों को उजाड़ने वालों के साथ आखिर उन सब का हिसाब कौन देगा साहब कैसा धर्म है तुम्हारा आपस में तो लड़ मरते हो प्रकृति जो तुम्हें पालती है उसको भी नहीं छोड़ते हो हम जीवन भर लड़ेंगे तुम्हारी इसी संस्कृति के खिलाफ बस इतना बता दो इस धरती को उजाड़ने का हिसाब आखिर कौन देगा साहब आई अनदर पोएम व्हिच इज लुक्स ऑटोबायोग्राफिकल आई हैव ट्रांसलेटेड विद द हेल्प ऑफ जूडिथ एंड नाउ शी विल रीड दैट पोएम ओनली आश नोज द हीट my grandfather was a bonded laborer, leading the cattle at the time boat. He took up water in his cup hands and drank. The news spread through the village that the tank was defiled. Carsmen threw him onto a blazing haystack and burnt him alive. Unable to bear the burden of the ashes, Mother Earth sobbed in lightning and thunder. Then the Lord of the sky poured down his rain and soothed us. Then my father was born, as cinders were covered in ash. My father was a bonded labourer, like his father, 
craving for a son like him. He prayed lying face down and stretched his hands to the temple courtyard. The news spread through the village that the god was defiled. Castmen set fire to the hut. My sleeping father, the skeleton inside, was burned alive. Unable to bear the burden of the smouldering ashes, Mother Earth wept and cried, sobbing as earthquake. The sea flooded in, soothing her, and then I was born, a volcano. Now they can't burn me. They burn themselves, trying to grab me, because I am turned into the letter that burns ignorance, myself a witness to the deathless truth. Thank you. Bodhi matra balladu beyo begeno. Jita gara na natata, ome bayari da dana karu garanno kere enchi ke bitto tano andu bogase moge do kuri da. Ura tumba habi to kere maili ge ayi tamba sudhi. Yaja mana jana awana hidi do uriva mede yoda ki ki jivan ta sutta. ಆ ಬೆಂದ ಬೂದಿಯನ್ನು ಹೊರದಾರದೆ ಭೂಮಿ ತಾಯಿ ಗುಡುಗಾಗಿ ಬರ ಸಿಡಿಲಾಗಿ ಬಿಕ್ಕಿ ಬಿಕ್ಕಿ ಅತ್ತಳು ಆ ಆಕಾಶರಾಯ ಮಳೆಯಾಗಿ ಬಂದು ಸಂತೈಸಿದ ಆ ಆಗ ಬೂದಿ ಮಿಚ್ಚಿದ ಕೆಂಡವಾಗಿ ಅಪ್ಪ ಹುಟ್ಟಿದ ಮತ್ತೆ ಜೀತಗಾರನಾದ ನನ್ನ ಅಪ್ಪ ತನ್ನಪ್ಪನ ನೆನೆದು ಅಂಥದೇ ಒಂದು ಸಂತಾನಕ್ಕಾಗಿ ಬೇಡುತ್ತಾ ದೇವಸ್ಥಾನದ ಅಂಗಳಕ್ಕೆ ಕೈ ಚಾಚಿ ಅಡ್ಡಬಿದ್ದ ದೇವರು ಮೈಲಿಗೆ ಆದನೆಂಬ ಸುದ್ದಿ ಊರ ತುಂಬ ಹಬ್ಬಿತ್ತು ಯಜಮಾನ ಜನ ಗುಡಿಸಿಲಿಗೆ ಬೆಂಕಿ ಇಟ್ಟು ನಿದ್ದೆಯಿಂದಲಿದ್ದ ಅಪ್ಪನ ಅಸ್ಥಿ ಪಂಜರವನ್ನು ಸುಟ್ಟರು ಮತ್ತೆ ಬೆಂದ ಬೂದಿಯನ್ನು ಹೊರಲಾರದೆ ಭೂಮಿ ತಾಯಿಯ ಭೂಕಂಪನವಾಗಿ ಬಿಕ್ಕಿ ಬಿಕ್ಕಿ ಅತ್ತಳು ಮತ್ತೆ ಬೆಂದ ಬೂದಿಯ ಹೊರಲಾರದೆ ಭೂಮಿ ತಾಯಿ ಭೂಕಂಪನವಾಗಿ ಬಿಕ್ಕಿ ಬಿಕ್ಕಿ ಅತ್ತಳು ಆ ಸಮುದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಾಹವಾಗಿ ಬಂದು ಸಂತೈಸಿದ ಆಗ ಜ್ವಾಲಾಮುಖಿಯಾಗಿ ನಾನು ಹುಟ್ಟಿದೆ ಈಗ ನನ್ನನ್ನವರು ಸುಡಲಾರರು ನನ್ನ ಹಿಡಿಯಲು ಬಂದು ತಾವೇ ಸುಟ್ಟುಕೊಳ್ಳುವರು ಯಾಕೆಂದರೆ ನಾನು ಅಜ್ಞಾನವನ್ನು ಸುಡುವ ಅಕ್ಷರವಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಸಾವಿಲ್ಲದ ಸತ್ಯಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಯಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಟು ಜಸಿಂತ ಆಯ್ತು ಯು ನೋ ಯು ಯು ನಿವ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ ರಿಪೀಟೆಡ್ಲಿ you tell about forest and nature uh, the very human uh, conditions so i want to ask you what kind of world you are dreaming for adivasis maybe you can translate it in english i am reading i am i'm saying in hindi ek aisi duniya ke sapne dekhti hu main एक ऐसी दुनिया के सपने देखती हूँ मैं जहाँ कोई सीमा ना हो लेकिन हर कोई जाने कि उसकी सीमा क्या है she has many such poems and two lines wonderful yes. sayings really so there is time yes. a bit of one only one yeah yeah <laughs> so there is one poem parwa care mother why do you score the jungle climb over hills all day and come home late with a load of wood just one bundle in reply mother says i score the woods climb over hills wander the whole day for dry higher wood just one bundle as i am very of cutting a living tree out of care of my jungle parwa ma ek bojha lakdi ke liye क्यों दिन भर जंगल छानती पहाड़ लांगती देर शाम घर लौटती हो माँ कहती है जंगल छानती पहाड़ लांगती दिन भर भटकती हूँ 
सिर्फ सूखी लकड़ियों के लिए कहीं काट न दू कोई जिंदा पेड़ देर इज वेरी स्मॉल पॉइंट आई विल एंड आई विल कंक्लूड माई वर्ड्स विद दैट स्मॉल पॉइंट जड़ों की जमीन लैंड ऑफ द रूट्स द साइट ऑफ ट्रीज दे कैन नॉट स्टैंड द साइट ऑफ ट्रीज दे कैन नॉट स्टैंड फॉर द रूट्स ऑफ ट्रीज दे क्लेम लैंड जड़ों की जमीन वे पेड़ों को बर्दाश्त नहीं करते वे पेड़ों को बर्दाश्त नहीं करते क्योंकि उनकी जड़ें जमीन मांगती हैं दिस इज माई लास्ट पॉइंट आई एल नॉट एक्सप्लेन यू इज गुड पॉइंट द मून इन माई पाम I you can imagine the dalit versus the others the moon in my palm to see the moon in your sky i kept to my hands holding a mirage and waited for night time that elusive mirage was not a teasing scrap of underfilled pond but a blemished mirror in my muddy palm the moon in your sky felt great and smiled to himself saying I am the tilak on the creator's brow the indescribable ornament of the sky the moon in my palm thinking how he was outcast and black and mocked as crow metal cried boo hoo for the moon in your sky it was full moon day full like the celebration of a woman for the moon in my palm an incurable wound a delusion of bandaged eyes Your moon is a clear crystal with rose water for its bath. My moon's body is pierced and scarred by shafts smeared with blood like mire. Has the charred and defeated mind withered and gone from my palm? To your skies vast fermenting milky milky dream. ಬೊಗಸೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಚಂದ್ರ ನಿನ್ನ ಆಗಸದ ಚಂದ್ರನ ಹಿಡಿಯಲು ನನ್ನ ಬೊಗಸೆಯಲ್ಲೊಂದಷ್ಟು ಮರೀಚಿಕೆ ಮೊಗೆದು ರಾತ್ರಿಗಾಗಿ ಕಾಯುತ್ತಿದ್ದೆ ತಿಳಿಗೊಳದ ತುಣುಕಾಗಿ ಕೆಣಕಿ ಕಾಡದೆ ಆ ಮಾಯಾ ಮರೀಚಿಕೆ ನನ್ನ ಬೊಗಸೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ರಾಡಿ ಎರಚಿದ ಕನ್ನಡಿಯಂತಾಗಿತ್ತು ನಿನ್ನ ಆಗಸದ ಚಂದ್ರ ನಾನೇ ಸೃಷ್ಟಿಕರ್ತನ ಬೆಳ್ಳಿ ಬೊಟ್ಟು ವರ್ಣನಾತೀತ ಮುಗಿಲ ಸಿಂಗಾರವೆಂದು ಬೀಗುತ್ತ ಒಳಗೊಳಗೆ ನಕ್ಕ ನನ್ನ ಬೊಗಸೆಯ ಚಂದ್ರ ತಾನು ಅವರ್ಣೀಯ ಕಪ್ಪು ಕಾಗೆ ಬಂಗಾರ ಎಂದು ಮೂದಲಿಸಿದಂತಾಗಿ ಗಡಗಳನೇ ಅತ್ತ ನಿನ್ನ ಆಗಸದ ಚಂದ್ರನಿಗೆ ಅಂದು ಹುಣ್ಣಿಮೆ ಹೆಣ್ಣಿನ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಸಂಭ್ರಮ ನನ್ನ ಬೊಗಸೆಯ ಚಂದ್ರನಿಗೆ ಇಂಗಲಾರದ ಹುಣ್ಣು ಕಣ್ಣು ಕಟ್ಟಿದ ವಿಭ್ರಮ ನಿನ್ನ ಆ ಚಂದ್ರ ಅಚ್ಚ ಸ್ಫಟಿಕ ಜಳಕಕ್ಕೆ ಇರುವುದೇನೋ ಪನ್ನೀರು ನನ್ನ ಈ ಚಂದ್ರನ ಮೈಯಲ್ಲಿ ನೆಟ್ಟ ಸಲಾಕಿಯ ಕುರುಹು ಕೆಸರಾಡಿದ ಕೆನ್ನೀರು ನಿನ್ನಾಗಸಕ್ಕೆ ಸವಿಸ್ತಾರ ಹೆಪ್ಪುಗಟ್ಟು ಹೆಪ್ಪಿಟ್ಟ ಹಾಲು ಗನಸು ನನ್ನ ಬೊಗಸೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಮುದುಡಿ ಹೋದ ಕಪ್ಪಿಟ್ಟ ಸೋಲು ಮನಸೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವಿ ವನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಅವರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನಿಕೋಲ್ ಥಿಯರಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜುಡಿಕ್ ಮಿಸ್ರಾಯ್ ಬರಾ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಟು ದೆಮ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು Well, we are so grateful. It's so wonderful. I mean, I, I know those poems very well, but it's so wonderful to hear you read them out and in, in both languages, you know, because I only ever hear the English translation. So it's, uh, it's wonderful to hear them. You know, they feel more complete when I hear the original as well. So, um, I don't know, as expected, it's slightly over time, but it's okay. I think we still have maybe five minutes for, um, for questions, and then that still gives you time to have a quick... cup of tea, the comfort bread, <laughs> before you come back. Yeah. You, you are. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for your reading your poems. I must admit I had not heard your poems before. Yes. And, but, and it was a very beautiful way to be introduced to them. I say beautiful but also painful. Yes. As we know the content of the poems is that um, I have read many of the Sintas poems before but again like you said we hear and hear the Sintas speak themselves. I want 
seen the grant through uh, all, the, uh, all the conversations and the poems I felt uh, uh, well, the, the themes that ran through kept taking me back to the annihilation of Carl's lecture of Ambedkar in a way because we talked of religion, we talked of the role of, and Hinduism in, in particular, we must call it out when I think it needs to be called out and certainly that came through, and especially the Dev Dasi poem, I think you brought it out very, very powerfully in that. And then, um, yeah, the theme of education and, and using that education as a balance. I mean, he, he also talked about how education is denied by the working class in the West had, it, it was only after they, they, they had education, universal education, they were able to read uh, uh, something which is put out by the resistance movement. Unless you can do that, you, you, you can't do this. So you brought that out as well. So I wanted to ask in your community especially, how are, what is the sense you're getting of how Hinduism is being negotiated? Because we know in Karnataka also, the, you know, it is being uh, driven a lot. So how is how are people negotiating between religion and 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 their and caste and and, and 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 hoping for this the world that you I think described so beautifully? Because we are also trying to negotiate in our world. I find God is invoked in every sentence in India. When I go, all I hear is everything is Bhagwan, Bhagose, and in, in mm -hmm. India they say, because there is no other hope, you know. Mm -hmm. And I have to constantly get my side keep telling people, God helps those who help themselves. Somebody said that very sensibly. So, how are, what is happening in your in your community then? Uh, you see, certainly. There is a constant effort in every society to negotiate and to, to give a feeling that we are on one people. But uh, somehow the Hindu conscience doesn't accept it. Uh, you know, once uh, I'll give an example, the Puri Shankaracharya, where he is the head of, uh, for a particular this thing, uh, when the people went to him that we should allow them to become priests, the Delhi should be made as priests. And, you should go inside all our and we can uh, see uh, uh, put an end to this kind of uh, discrimination. You know what he said. The ultimate answer was, so we will have a separate temples for them. <laughs> the Puri Sankaraja, This was the head of a. Um, yes. So, the how do you want the negotiations to be done when the highest the priest? who has a control over religion, if he suggests that let them not come to our tem temples and let them have a separate temple, so means what? How do we go about negotiations? This is our problem. And you know, the, the caste system now has become mental more than physical. See, nowadays people don't mind touching or getting, now political people are playing a lot. They go to the Dalit's house and eat uh, breakfast and show off for the newspapers. But they don't mind touching now. It is mental because those, the power, as I already explained it, the power and money should not go to them. Yeah. We should avoid by any chance. That is the quintessence of caste system, as I understand. Uh, see, the Dalit, as I was explaining earlier, the sense of Dalit is pain and penury. Because of Big restrictions, constrictions everywhere for everything. You can't drink a cup of water when you are thirst. See in Rajasthan, uh, just uh, two weeks back, a boy, a, a, an eight-year-old boy, uh, he goes to out of thirst to touch a, a part meant for the teachers, upper caste teachers. Uh, that is a big sin he committed. The teacher himself beat him back black and blue. Next day he was dead. So it is going on now. It is mental. So these people should be kept there as they are. They should not get education. Do you know in the AIMS, the already a medical sciences, it is difficult for a MD doctor to come through. Yeah. There, is, there are in very high IITs. They still say that you see these SCSTs, they, they come and spoil our standard. This kind of talking goes as even today. But it's in reality it's not so. There, are, there is not even a single person in India now who has excelled Ambedkar, Dr. Ambedkar. No, absolutely. Yeah. We, 
So, but they believe that uh, this caste person is a brilliant man, this man is so, so and so. So that's it and it's how to solve this, how to negotiate this sickness. That's why uh, Ambedkar rightly called them as congenital idiots. Yes, I agree, I agree entirely. <laughs> and I think his solution that he said that we must... I mean, yes, he, he was very brave. Right. I believe that. Yeah, he, he had no inhibition to you say anything. <laughs> Wonderfully, he named it. So, just we need to take, keep a little bit of time, because I know both of you will come back in the last session and yeah. I feel like we'll pick up on a lot of the things that yeah. you started talking. I think we, we could go on and on. Is there any more questions for Jacinta? Yeah. I suppose if you are and uh, yes. there is a lot of control and like kind of a negotiation and some kind of a categorization around the Adivasi lives. So one of the points you have mentioned about the how we, we are not uh, one was we are Adivasi. Like some people call, want to call them as a uh, mm. indigenous, Mojibasi. Mm. So what is yeah. your take on the, how you differentiate between both the categories, like one was and Adivasi. Mm. And my another question to Hina Swami is, like as we Dalit writers has, have rejected the very idea of aesthetic, that is like kind of a certain kind of a notion of around the aesthetic. So how you define the Dalit aesthetic in your own way as a Dalit writer? Thank you. Yeah. Um, so because <coughs> in India I said that uh, uh, mainstream or uh, Hinduism they never accept that uh, uh, Adivasi are mool vasi. So they always says that uh, they live in forest, so they are one vasi, forest people. But they are not uh, first settler. But there is. Uh, so many research and everybody, uh, uh, those who are studied, they, they are knowing that how people came in India and uh, and uh, why we our language and why our culture are so different. And politically, now in India, Hinduism making, uh, they are going to Adivasi people and then they are trying to make that all Adivasis of India or tribal people are Hindu. So um, that's why, but we still feel because our language is very different, whole culture and whole, whole Jeevan Darshan, Jeevan that, ha, life philosophy life. of life, life. Yeah, yeah, that is totally different. And I feel worldwide that that uh, philosophy is struggling with capitalism and uh, you know with uh, this caste system and all. So we we consider ourselves in uh, other part of uh, in uh, uh, world indigenous people and uh, people and native peoples how, oh, what kind of struggle they are doing same we are do, we have in india so we are uh, so people are not adivasi people they don't um, call themselves vanvasi and because of uh, for their identity now that struggle is go, going uh, powerfully uh, for their existence and then their identity to save their identity also As far as uh, Dalit aesthetics is concerned, you know, the, uh, Om Prakash Valmiki, I think, has written a book called that. Uh, yeah. Uh, see, uh, without a human element, uh, what do you see in aesthetics? And uh, more, uh, more uh, the Dalit literature is more human. It is based on Ambedkar uh, philosophy. See, equality, fraternity and justice. And uh, we operate only on these things. You, you find, find any Dalit uh, writing, poems, essays, anything, but it is just uh, surrounding these human values. So I think it qualifies uh, to any extent, I believe. And, and in detail he has explained a lot in that book. I must go through that. My short answer is that nobody can die, deny that the least uh, literature has no aesthetics. It is wrong. Uh, beginning they have tried to alienate us, but it's, now it's not uh, acceptable at all. Thank you. And I, I want, just I want to uh, uh, add that 
Uh, in India, uh, when you uh, see many, uh, wherever uh, Hindus are made temples, when you go back little bit uh, further, you will find that there was one Adivasi person who was first who was <coughs> worshipping uh, maybe a tree or maybe a stone and later they captured that area and yeah. they made that temple and wow. they, it is a uh, Hindu temple. So in many places in Jharkhand also, in Odisha, Chhattisgarh also, uh, they couldn't uh, 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 deny that Pahan. So still there is one Pahan place and then one uh, uh, Pandit, uh, pan, uh, one Pandit is there. Uh, uh, so that's why they claim that okay we are together. And Adivasi people is still we very less we are writing and then now you know speaking uh, uh, in India and outside. So they are unable to fight with uh, literature or maybe so people resist people uh, people movement going on in uh, in road or maybe in forest area but in in intellectual area or maybe in academic academic and other places nobody talk about that much so another kind of uh, uh, struggle <coughs> adivasi people have yes yeah, yeah, absolutely i mean as you say this could go on and on and it will go on in the second half of Evening, but thank you so much. You see what wonderful writers and thinkers and how both their activism and their wonderful poetry and their humanity you can't divide us, can you? It's all one part. Thank you so much. Thank you.